Welcome back to the workshop. I'm Josh. Uh, this episode we're going over the guided field sharpener and so we're in its proper home out here in the great outdoors. We're going to be talking about some of the features that make the field sharpener really special. We'll go over all the components, the angle guides, the abrasives. Then we'll show how to sharpen a few different types of knives and tools on the field sharpener. And finally, I'll give you a quick overview on the different components and how to maintain them, clean them, and make sure you're getting the best performance from your sharpener. The guided field sharpener starts off with five different abrasives. A coarse 220 grit diamond gives you a great coarse grit for repairs or setting the edge on a really dull knife. Flipping it over, there's a 600 grit medium diamond, which is great for sharpening and touch-ups if your knife has seen a little bit of use. Next up is the ceramic rod. There's a coarse and a fine ceramic rod. The coarse is a corduroy-like surface. It's an interrupted abrasive with ridges, which allows for more surface contact with the blade. You can index the ceramic rod with this red knob. And as I rotate around, I can rotate from coarse all the way to fine, which is a smooth surface for fine honing and polishing the edge. In the middle, there's a groove specifically for fish hooks. Slide the fish hook into that groove and run it back and forth a few times to restore a really crisp and sharp tip. There's another ceramic rod here up top. It's much smaller and it's really meant for sharpening the inside of serrated knives, specifically those smaller serrations. The large serrations you can touch up on the larger ceramic rod here. The leather strap comes with a green compound already rubbed onto the leather. As you break it in, you'll start to develop this black and glossy look. That's how you know it's really performing well and polishing your edge. Another obvious feature of the guided field sharpener is the amber angle guides. These angle guides are set at 20 degrees on the diamond, and actually they're set at 25 degrees on the ceramic. We do that to create a slight micro bevel and to help you get to the cutting edge faster when you're touching up your knife or doing that final sharpening. It's also a 25 degree angle set here on the leather, and you can see it's a reverse guide. When I set my knife on the guide, I can then bring it up to the strop and make that reverse stroke to polish the edge. One more hidden component or feature of the GFS is the internal broadhead wrench. We've got a four and a three blade broadhead wrench that you can stick the arrows in there, twist the shaft, and they come right off so you don't have to grab the sharp metal. On the other side, if you open it up, it exposes the compartment, and if you didn't know, there's some instructions in there. This is a great user's guide, pretty condensed version, and should tell you everything you need to know if you're not watching this video. Store tinder or extra compound or maybe a little bit of oil for the strop in here, or really whatever you need for wherever you're taking your guided field sharpener. I almost forgot the guided field sharpener actually also has a lanyard hole. You can't miss that feature. All right, let's jump in and sharpen a few different types of knives on the field sharpener. I'll show you some of the subtle differences in technique. First off, we're just gonna start with a basic outdoor bushcraft knife. This knife's already got a decent edge on it, and so I'm just gonna start on the medium diamond. There's a couple ways you can hold the guided field sharpener. There's this thumb grab here, and you can keep your hand completely out of the way of the sharpener, or you can keep your, all your fingers under the surface that you're sharpening on, but get a little bit better purchase on the sharpener. You could even rest it down on a table, a rock, or some sort of work surface. I'll rest the knife on the 20 degree guide, and make a pass along the diamond. Notice I stopped with the tip of the knife in the middle of the plate or just without dropping it off the edge. If I run the knife over the edge of the plate, I risk damaging the tip by shaving off some metal. I'll make about three to five passes per side until I begin to raise a burr. I'll check for a burr by pushing my finger away from the edge on the side I just sharpened and it should catch like a fine wire on the very edge. Once I've raised the burr, I'll switch to the other side and repeat the same number of strokes. This is a little bit larger knife, but if you have a knife any bigger than this, you could make two different strokes and still accomplish the same thing. The first stroke would sharpen the first portion of the blade, and the second would sharpen through the belly and towards the tip. It's the same process and allows you to have a little more control over your sharpening. After I've raised the burr on both sides, then I'll progress down to the ceramic. You can start on the coarse ceramic or you can skip straight to the fine ceramic. I'll just start on the fine ceramic. Again, the process is the same. I'll rest the knife on the guide, bring it to the abrasive, and make a pass across the stone. When I work on the ceramic, I'll alternate strokes, one stroke per side. 
This pushes the burr back and forth, refining it farther until it disappears completely. After I've honed on the ceramic, I'll bring it over to the leather. Resting the knife on the guide, bringing it up to the leather, and making that reverse stroke. Again, as I work, I'll end up alternating sides, finishing with light pressure, and one stroke per side. I'm sharp and ready to go. When sharpening knives with a recurve or like a hawksbill style blade, start on the coarse ceramic rod. The coarse ceramic is a slower way to sharpen, but it does give you access to sharpening the inside portion of that curved blade. It will raise a burr, just be prepared to take a little bit more time. The process is the same. Rest the knife on the guide and make the pass across the ceramic. Depending on the level of sharpness or dullness of your blade, it may take anywhere from 10 to 20 or maybe even a little bit more strokes per side to raise that burr. Once you have a burr, switch sides and repeat the same number of strokes. Once you've done even strokes per side, change to the fine ceramic rod and alternate strokes just like you're sharpening any other knife. After that, move on to the leather strop and finish it up. You may have to get a little creative as you use the leather strop, but don't be afraid to use the sides of the strop to get in contact with the inside of that curved edge. Just like that, ready to roll. The field sharpener is also great for sharpening larger tools like hatchets and axes, and I'll show you how I like to do that. For some tools, you can bring the blade to the sharpener and work back and forth, almost like you would a knife. I like to use the coarse 220 grit, it removes material quickly and helps you restore the edge. You can also set the field sharpener down on a rock or a work surface or a tailgate. And that way you're getting good leverage to use the sharpener and you're keeping your hands clear. You can also bring the sharpener to the ax or the hatchet. Hold it in your hand, keep your fingers behind the plane of the abrasive and work back and forth like a file. The process is similar to knife sharpening in that you raise a burr and then change to the other side and remove that burr. If you really want to polish the edge, you could probably use the leather strop to shine it up a little bit, but I recommend using something with a little more horsepower. The field sharpener can sharpen serrated knives as well. Use the large ceramic rod to get inside of the large serrations and the small ceramic to get inside of the small serrations. The process is pretty simple. Rest the serration on the ceramic rod and find where it nests in and you can usually feel the angle ground into the knife. Slide it back and forth maybe half a dozen times and then you can check to feel for a burr. The burr will be pushed up like a fine wire again just following the inside of that serration. Work through each serration independently, the large and the small, until you have that burr. Then go back and remove the burr. To do that, I like to rest the knife nearly flat on the ceramic, but slightly angled. This way I'm not marring the whole face of the blade. Make a reverse stroke like you would on leather. Perhaps do this three or four times, and then progress down to the leather. Same process, nearly flat and pulling backwards to avoid damaging the leather. Make sure to pull straight back. If you cut at an angle, you may damage the leather as well. We get a lot of questions about how to sharpen broadheads on the field sharpener and every broadhead's different and they each present their own challenges. The biggest challenge is getting access to those blades or the cutting edges. Once I get my broadhead tightened onto something I'm going to use to sharpen, a little handle or a bit of arrow shaft, then I'll put the plates back on and I usually start on the fine diamond or skip straight to the fine ceramic. My goal is to get that blade in contact with the abrasive and I'll move it against that abrasive in any way that I can to raise up a burr and to match the existing angle. On something like this, I'll work up and down to restore that factory angle. The process is the same. I'll come in and I'll hone on the ceramic. You can even polish with a reverse stroke on the leather, just like a knife and be left with ridiculously sharp rodheads. Let's talk maintenance. The diamond plates on your field sharpener can be cleaned pretty easy with a stiff bristled brush or soap and water. The diamond on the abrasive is always going to be harder than your knife steel, 
but with heavy use, they do wear down and smooth over, requiring a little bit more heavy-handed sharpening. If you do want to replace your diamond abrasives, you can find those on WorksharpTools.com. Maintenance for the ceramic is simple as well. You can clean it with soap and water or with a pencil eraser. If you do need to replace the ceramic rod, there's a pin by the red knob here that you can push out. Then the ceramic rod slides out and you can find those replacements on WorksharpTools.com as well. Last but not least, the leather strop. We do have replacements available for the leather strop, again, WorksharpTools.com, but don't underestimate cleaning out the leather strop. If it gets packed with dirt, debris, or knife steel that you don't want in there anymore and you wanna reset the strop, use really hot and soapy water to break down the oils inside of the strop and release any of those pieces of debris. Then, once the leather's dry again, apply a very small amount of oil, boot oil, mink oil, petroleum jelly to the strop, and then the compound. Work that in. And like I mentioned earlier, as you work it in, it should develop into a glossy, almost black looking finish. That's when you know it's really well broken in. Here's a few tips for this on the go sharpener. When throwing it in a pack, flip your abrasives inside out. They still snap into the frame the same way and it protects anything in your pack that might get scratched. Be mindful of the magnets on the inside and when you throw this in your pack, try to keep it away from a compass. If you're out in the field, you might be there a while. If you're out traveling, not into the woods, it's still a good idea to bring the field sharpener. I don't know how many vacation rentals I've been in where the knives are dull. I actually think every vacation rental has dull knives. This is a super fast and portable way to touch up those knives and it's TSA friendly. Last thing I'll say about the field sharpener, if you're looking to gift a sharpener, this is likely the one. We've heard from so many customers all over the world that this is how they learned how to sharpen a knife. So keep that in mind, maybe this is the one. Thanks for watching this episode of The Workshop. Let us know in the comments, what is the craziest thing you've sharpened with the field sharpener? Or what's your favorite feature on the field sharpener? If you're new to our channel, you can hit the subscribe button right here. We post new videos every week, all about our sharpeners and sharpening in general, or there's probably another video you'll like right here. I'm Josh, and we'll see you next time.